All right, welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and create the React project for our uh, Discord dashboard. And we're gonna pretty much set up everything that we need. We're gonna install all of the necessary dependencies. And that's gonna involve uh, installing libraries such as React Router. We'll probably uh, install styled components and I might install SAS probably if we need it for any CSS or SCSS modules. But I think those will probably be the most, uh, probably be majority of the, uh, the libraries that we'll need anyways. So let's go ahead and get started with creating our React app. So I'm going to use the npx create React app command. I'm going to call this Discord dashboard React. I'm going to use the template flag. I'm going to specify the template flag and write TypeScript because all the code that we're going to be writing is going to be in TypeScript. Hopefully there's no issues with this. Yeah, I don't know why it's giving me this issue. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the alternative command. I'm going to use yarn create react app. Discord dashboard react. And hopefully the flag is also can, can be provided as well. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. So this is, so this is a new version of create react app. I'm not sure why this is giving me the issue because I did uninstall this globally, but it's fine. But yeah, if you have any issues with uh, setting up a React project, you can just visit this website and you can go ahead and take a look at it. We are using Yarn though. I'm not sure if for those people who are using NPM, I'm not sure if there'll be any issues. There shouldn't be much issues though. But um, yeah, let me see. Okay, there we go. We should be able to create this project just fine. Let's see. It's going to take a little bit of time. There we go. All right, so let's cd into the dashboard now. We're going to go ahead and open up our text editor so we can see all of our files and we should have everything in our source folder. Everything looks great. Let's go ahead and just run the project, make sure that works. So I'm just going to right click this start and just run it. You can also just type yarn start in your terminal and that'll work fine too. All right, great. So we have our React app running just fine. So let's go back into the code. Uh, let's see. Seems like they changed a lot of stuff with Create React App. Uh, I think maybe they may have made it a lot faster. I'm not sure. Anyways, we're not going to get into that right now. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just minimize this console for now because we're not going to really need to worry about that. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install a couple dependencies that we'll need. So we're definitely going to need uh, React Router. So I'm going to go ahead and do yarn add React router actually i think it's react router dom yeah it should be react router dom and there's actually a new version of react router which is great i haven't really used it much but it should be pretty straightforward to use here's it here's the uh, react router dom uh let me see uh did it install the version 5 or version 6 let me see so it seems like it installed version 6 okay there we go yeah it's specified at 6 there we go okay great so now that we have react router dom we can this is going to allow us to set up routing for our application and i'm going to leave this react router uh tab on my other uh, on my other uh, screen just in case i need to reference it we're then going to also need to install uh let me open up my terminal where is it yeah, so we're going to go ahead and install, probably use some styled components. Um, and let me see, I think styled components is what we'll need. Let me also install the types for styled components as well. I'm not sure if we need types for React Router. I don't think we will. All right, so we just installed styled components. So I think, honestly, we are good to go. For the most part, I don't think there's really much left that we need to do. We can start uh, setting up the route, the routes right now. Uh, but what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to get rid of all of the unnecessary files that we won't really need. So that's going to include the app.css and the app.test.tsx file. We can get rid of the logo.svg file. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I'll leave the setup test alone. Report with vitals. Yeah, that, that's all fine. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, yeah, and this should be fine, too. I will get rid of this and this, though. Uh, okay, and then I'll get rid of all of this stuff. We'll get rid of the logo import. 
um, and we'll get rid of the CSS import as well. And I'll get rid of that class name. And let's just go and just write hello just to make sure that it's being displayed. Perfect. All right, great. Uh, okay, cool. So let's go ahead and set up the actual project now. Let's set up all of the colors, uh, the color scheme, the fonts. Let's set up uh, the routes as well. Uh, let's just first start off by setting up the background color. Well, let's establish the background color. So uh, in the Figma uh, wireframe, I have uh, this background color, which is 292929. There we go. And then the font color will just be uh, white, which is just FFF. Okay. Uh, for the font itself, we are going to be using a uh, Google font. It's called DM Sans. I'm not sure if we need to actually import it. But uh, it seems like for some reason I can actually I can actually use it. But I think it's because I probably have it installed on my system. So for those who actually need to use the actual, uh, need to actually import the font, uh, you can literally just go to fonts.google.com. You can use any font you want, but I'm just going to use the M Sans. It's up to you. But uh, yeah, let me go ahead and actually just select all this, and, I'll, and I will I will import it, and I'll just copy this right over here. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to go inside the public folder inside index.html. And right over here, we're going to paste that over there. And that should allow you to have the font enabled. So let me go back to, we can, we can now close this out. And there we go. Seems like everything's fine. Okay. Uh, now that we have that all set up, the next thing that we need to do, uh, the next thing that we will do uh, is set up the routes. Okay. So in React Router version 6, it is slightly different, but it's nothing crazy, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go inside the index.ts file. We're going to go ahead and import the browser router from the React Router DOM library. Remember, the React Router DOM has the browser router, and typically what we do is we rename it as router. You don't have to do that, but I personally do that. It's just a convention that I... Uh, do that i found other people doing as well and what we want to do is we want to wrap the app component uh we want to wrap it with the router okay so now we can actually use routes uh so what we're going to do next is we just go inside the app.tsx file and we can actually just get rid of this div we probably won't even need that and what i'll do is i'll just simply import the routes uh from react router dom so this is literally just a container uh, that will allow us to pretty much wrap all of our routes. Okay. So I'm not sure how complicated our routes will be. I don't think it should be too complicated. But let's go ahead and just set up some basic routes. So let's set up the home route. So this is going to be the login page. Um, and in React uh, Router DOM version 6, there's actually... Uh, wait. Did I import route? There we go. Okay. Yeah. So instead of having component, it's actually element. I don't think component... Yeah, I think they got rid of a component. So it's actually element. And then we can go ahead and just pass in uh, a component in here. We'll have to create that though. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to create a folder called pages. And we're going to go ahead and create a folder called components. Uh, I might not keep this structure forever. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it alone for now. but Because I kind of want to put everything in its own folder. That makes sense, but I don't really think we'll have anything too crazy. But for now, we'll stick with this. So for pages, we'll create a page called homepage.tsx. And this is just basic React. So we'll just go ahead and create a function, homepage. All right. And then now we can easily just go ahead and render out that homepage. I mean, what we want to do is we want to pass in home page just like this and now if i go over to the uh the guest route or the slash route it's going to bring me to home page okay pretty cool all right so now that we have the home page set up what's next is we want to set up the other pages as well so the home page is actually just going to be the uh the logging page uh as you can see over here in this wireframe okay 
uh, we're going to need to have the menu page. So this is going to kind of be like the main page that the user is always going to be re redirected to as soon as they are authenticated. And once they want, once they uh, select a server, then they'll be able to do all of the configurations and stuff. I actually thought about this while I was, uh, while I was like recording. Um, we might also want to add like a, another page. Uh, so for example, when you click on the server, it can show like, you know, some server statistics, like it'll show like a dashboard, like an actual dashboard. It can show server statistics. It can show the ping latency, but we'll, we'll worry about that later for now. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up the menu page. So let's do that. Uh, so I'll go ahead. I'm just going to, honestly, I'm just going to change this to, I'm, I'm not going to prefix it with page or actually I will, because we, we will use this as a, uh, a component and I don't want to risk, um, I don't want to risk getting the names confused. So let's do that for now. Okay. So we have our menu page. So this is where it's going to display all of the uh, guilds that the that the user is in and that they have permission to manage the bot. Okay, we're then going to need a page to display all of the categories that the user can uh, modify. So that's literally this page right over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do category page TSX. There we go. And then, and then from here, uh, the idea is that when they click on the category, it's going to take them to, oh, I'm sorry. When they click on the specific uh, option that they want to modify, uh, the idea is that it's going to navigate them. It's going to push them to a new route. And that route is going to have uh, the page where they can update, uh, you know, either the prefix or the welcome message. Okay. So we'll also create pages for that too. I think I'll probably create a folder for this and I'll just call this, um, I guess, configuration pages. Cause I don't really want to group this in the same category as like the main pages. Cause these are really just like, you can think of these as like kind of like sub pages really. But uh, for now I'll just go ahead and leave it alone. And I'll just call this uh, update prefix page. Or I'll call this guild prefix page of TSX. You know, prefix page. Okay. And then we'll do one more, which is the welcome message page. So welcome message page of TSX. And this is literally just used for updating the welcome message as well as the channel that it should be sent in. Welcome message page. Okay. Now that we have all our pages. Let's go ahead and set the routing for it now. So we'll go back to the app.tsx file. Uh, so this one's going to be pretty interesting because the main important thing is that we need to know which uh, guild that the user has selected. So if the user has not selected a guild, then we can't really, uh, we, we, we won't really know which route to really, uh, to, we won't really know which information to fetch from the database, right? Because remember, the reason why we need to know what guild that the user is in is because we need, we want to be able to show them the current values that they have set for their configuration. That's a huge important thing. And in order to get that information, we need to know what the guild is. So that way we can make an HTTP request and fetch that information. So how exactly do we make it so that we know what the use, which guild the user has selected? Well, there's a couple ways. Uh, you can either use, uh, or you can either use react context. And the way that that would work is you would pretty much wrap this whole thing inside of context. Uh, or wrap the menu at least inside of context. Actually, no, yeah, you would wrap all these routes inside of context. Um, and the way you do is inside the menu, inside the menu page, whenever the user selects a guild, you would update the context, and the context would have a field such as the guild ID, and then you would update that. So that way, every in every single route, you would have to check the context, and then you would have to fetch. You you have to look for the correct um the correct uh, guild configuration and if there are no if there is no guild id currently set right because let's say for example if the user tries to visit um you know these category routes without selecting because they can still visit the routes directly right because they can literally just type in the address bar 
and that would allow them to take them to the page directly. Uh, in order to prevent any problems, because let's say if they visit these pages, but there's no guild ID to set because they never actually clicked, because they didn't arrive to that page without uh, without clicking on the server, right? Well, what you can do is you can just check the context, and if there's no guild ID, you can just return or you can just redirect the page back to the menu. Okay, so it will never work if they try to visit. It'll never. It'll basically never allow them to visit a. A, a specific route without a guild ID selected, which I think is a good idea. Uh, another thing that you could do is you could also just add a route parameter um, of, that is the guild ID. And that route parameter would pretty much allow you to distinguish which guild that we're currently modifying. I personally think that the, uh, the, the context is a lot better in my opinion. So let's go ahead and stick with that. So first, let's just go ahead and get all of our routes first. So we'll have a menu route, okay. We'll have a uh, we'll have a dashboard route. But we're not going to implement that for now. I'm actually going to comment this out, and we'll, I'll note that down for later. Um, let's see. We're going to have a categories route. So this will show literally all of the categories, and then we're going to have um, let's see, what should I call this update prefix? I do want to kind of prefix these routes with a dashboard, but maybe guild would be better. Yeah, I think I'll prefix this with guild just so that uh, we are aware of what these routes really represent. I'll just call this update message for now because I don't want to make the uh, I don't want to make the route look so long. I could also just remove the hyphen and just do slash update instead. Um, or I could just do, let's see, prefix slash update. Now I'll just leave it alone like this for now. I don't want to over, I don't want to overthink it. So we'll leave it alone like this for now. Okay. Let's go ahead and test out our routes. Let's make sure they all work. So let's go ahead and do menu. That works. Categories. Okay. And I can assume that the guild and update prefix will work too. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So what I was talking about with the context is we need to basically set up a, Re a React context, which is going to allow us to share uh, properties across uh, different components without needing to necessarily pass down props to those components. So this is a very good situation to use uh, the context API because essentially we want to share data across the menu page or, at, or not, not really the menu page, but at least the category page, the guild prefix page, as well as the welcome message page and really any additional page that's to that relies on knowing what guild to read or update information or even delete from right so because we need to share data across all these components instead of just uh, instead of just passing down props to every single one of them we can literally just use a context and then uh we can we can provide default values and then we can consume it in each one of the components and I'm going to go ahead and show you how that's going to work. So in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and set up the context. I don't want to make this episode super long, so I'll save this for the next episode. So pretty much, like I said, React context is going to allow us to share uh, properties across different components without needing to actually nest them or uh, pass them down as a prop. Okay, so I will see you all in that next video. Peace out.